You guys remember there were six uh, Palestinian uh, prisoners who escaped from an Israeli maximum security prison called uh, Gilboa, right? So, uh, th th I mean, this was so embarrassing for the Israelis, right? Because, again, not, not only is this a prison, it's a maximum security prison. And these guys escaped with a spoon. They literally dug a tunnel with a spoon from the toilet and embarrassed the hell out of them. Now, uh, the, the, the recent development, the new development with these guys, because they got caught, unfortunately, uh, they've, been sent, they've been given new sentences, okay? Additional time in prison. So um, this is from Al Jazeera, and uh, they say that uh, Israel sentences uh, Palestinian prison escapees to five more years, okay? So... By the way, just to jog your memory, I had, a, uh, I had their names up somewhere. Hold on, on my Twitter. I'll, I'll give them to you in a moment. But uh, uh, they, they essentially gave them, I think it was five years and eight months. Yeah, here it, here it is, five years and eight months. So they, they gave that to five of the prisoners. The, there's one prisoner that they haven't sentenced yet. Um, and that guy is very, 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 very famous. I mean, his name is Zakaria Zubaydi. He's probably the most famous out of the six. So I don't know what's up with that, why they haven't... Um, uh, given him a sentence yet, but um, we'll see. And um, I just want to show you quickly, if I, if I may, the names of the prisoners so I can kind of uh, jog your memory. Um, and uh, some of them are in what Israel loves to call terrorist groups. So, you know, if, of course, of course, if you are a, col a colonizer and an occupier, the, the native population resisting you, you're going to call them a terrorist. So this is what Israel does. It calls these six men terrorists. And they're charged with terrorism and all, you know, all of this, uh, given life sentences, so on and so on. So here they are. These are the six who managed to escape from Gilboa. It's, this stuff is really like out of a movie. It's, it's frankly incredible. It's frankly incredible. I mean, look at the hole. <laughs> look at this. This is, this is where, how they escaped from this hole, this tiny hole. <laughs> um, really something, honestly. There's also a video of the toilet somewhere. I'll show you in, in a second. Uh... But they really made them look like fools. Anyway, here are the six, um, the six prisoners. So you can see, um, Yaqub was uh, incarcerated. He's in prison since two thousand three. He has a life sentence. Um, Hamad also life sentence. Mahmoud life sentence. Um, Munadel. Since 2019 in prison, awaiting trial. Do you see that he's basically been, he's, he's spent three years just waiting for the trial. Hasn't even been convicted or anything. Uh, Zakaria Zubaydi, since 2019, also awaiting trial, same thing. And um, Ayham al kamanji uh, since 2006, life prison. So the, these guys, Israel accuses them of being terrorists and so on. And now they've added five years and eight months to uh, their sentence. And I want to say something here because... Um, these guys are being kept in solitary confinement, yeah? They're being uh, uh, kept in, in horrible conditions, and uh, some countries, some countries like Germany, like Sweden, like Austria, they don't punish you if you escape from prison, okay? Now, let me, let me make this very clear. If you escape from prison and you, you know, steal a car and then run someone over, you know, God forbid, yes, you will be punished for that. But if you just escape, you do, you do nothing wrong after you've escaped. You are not punished for the actual escape because the law considers escaping, uh, you know, a, a, um, a part of human nature. And so that is not punishable. That, that's their legal interpretation of these things. And I think um, it's, it's really striking because the Israelis, uh, I really want you to understand this because this is very important. The Israeli um, occupation is, is running its occupation with military courts. Do you understand? So these guys, and, and, most of the, of the people being arrested that are civilians are not taken to civilian courts. They're taken to military courts, okay? And of course, I mean, this is martial law. And the, the irony here is that the laws that the Israelis are using come from the British. They are literally colonial laws, literally taken from the British mandate in Palestine. I can give you one example. One of them is the military censor. So the Israelis, you know, they love to say, Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. But when the army wants to, they can impose a, 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 what is basically a gag order. They can shut the press up and force them not to talk about a certain operation, a certain uh, story. It, they, it's, they can gag them. And this comes from the British mandate. 
another one is administrative detention. This is this is way worse because they can arrest you and they, uh, they, it, they can arrest you and not tell you why, nor your lawyer, because it's classified. So you got people right now uh, sitting in Israeli jails who don't even know why they've been arrested. And their lawyer is not allowed to know either. And they, they don't charge you with a crime. There's no, they don't charge you. Uh, they just keep you there indefinitely. It's, it, it's administrative det detention. So every six months, they can renew it indefinitely forever. You got people who spent seven years in prison and don't even know why. Can you imagine how sick and sadistic that is? Once again, this comes from the British, from the British mandate in Palestine. So the, when we say Israel is a, is, a, um, is a settler colonial project, we mean that literally in the, in the full sense of the word. Even the military laws that they impose on the Palestinians come from a British mandate. You couldn't make this up even if you tried. And uh, my point is that these, um, uh, these six escapees from Gilboa, I mean, they, they, they are subject to the same, uh, um, the same thing, and uh, uh, they were really regarded as heroes. You know, when they broke out the spoon, right? They broke out, they dug a tunnel with a spoon. That became a, a symbol of resistance in Palestine. I'm not even kidding. Look at this. These are, this is some artwork So from Al Jazeera. And uh, they escaped back in September 2021, um, in case I didn't mention that. You can see here uh, artwork with a spoon. Um, and there's, they're also mentioning Janine down here because the guys uh, who escaped, uh, most of the escapees, they, they come from Janine, uh, from the Janine refugee camp, which I'll talk about in a moment. But yeah, you got uh, people who are going out uh, with spoons. It's, it's amazing, right? It's amazing. So um, they, uh, they were really regarded as heroes. People were celebrating in the street that they managed to escape. So... It's, it's, and, and not just in Palestine, right? Like, like the whole Arab world is rooting for them uh, because of what they did. And uh, because they, they basically, you know, gave the middle finger to the occupation. Now, let me talk about Janine for one second, because um, many of these guys, not all of them, but I, I think most of them, uh, Zakaria Zubaydi for sure. So this guy over here, there you go, Zakaria Zubaydi. Uh, he's from Janine and uh, Janine, um, is uh, over here, right? It's a little town uh, in the West Bank. And by the way, Gil the prison they, they broke out of is not far away from here. I don't, I don't know the exact location. It's somewhere over here. Um, yeah, right, there you go. Gilboa must be somewhere over here. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me Janine is a very important place because it's become, uh, well, the Americans and the Israelis would say, oh, it's a hotbed of terrorism. Uh, it's a hotbed of resistance. That's what it is. And the Israelis have attacked this refugee camp many times. By the way, before I continue, just think about this. There is a Palestinian refugee camp for Palestinians in Palestine. Just think about that. Can you imagine a French refugee camp in France? Like, th think about how, they've, the, uh, uh, how disgusting and absurd it is that Palestinians have been so dispossessed of their land. So much of their land has been stolen that they become refugees in their country. And, you know, any, any Jew from Europe or the United States can just show up and uh, take Israeli citizenship, have two citizenships, and then, you know, take land from Palestinians. Wow. Well done. So, uh, Janine refugee camp and, uh, and, and Janine itself, it, it's become a symbol of resistance. You know, when, when you say Janine, you associate it with Muqawme. And, um, by the way, Shirin Abu Akleh, the, the Palestinian journalist, was killed nearby. Why? Because the Israelis were raiding it. Okay? So, you know, they've been talking about how Russia is violating Ukraine's borders and uh, Ukraine's sovereignty. I didn't hear them complaining about Israel raiding the West Bank, raiding Palestinian territory. Never mind occupying it. <laughs> right? But they, they were basically, you had um, Shirin, the uh, Al Jazeera journalist, and five other journalists from different outlets. They were all together uh, in the area and they were there precisely because they know that an Israeli raid is coming and they wanted to report on it. And, they, and Shirin uh, ended up being killed. So um, you, can, you get an idea of how reckless the Israeli uh, occupation forces are. And, um, you know, the stories are really, uh, uh, really uh, harrowing. You know, this guy over here, Zakaria, who escaped down here, Zakaria Zubaydi. Again, like, he, he's the most famous of the six. This guy... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, 
But I recall that the Israelis killed his mother. They shot her while she was in her own house. Okay? In her own house. She did nothing wrong. She's in her house. They, they shot her and killed her. And I think his brother was also killed by the Israelis. So, I mean, like, what the fuck do you expect? You murder this guy's family and you want him to just tolerate it? Like, of course he's going to join the resistance. What is wrong with you? You know, the irony is that the Israelis did the same thing to the British. You had mass immigration of European Jews coming to Palestine in the late 19th century, early 20th century. And what were they doing? They took up arms against the British because for them, it was like, oh, we are liberating our land, right? Well, they're Europeans. It's not their land, but they, they, they thought it's their land. And how did they do that? They took up arms. They were assassinating, murdering, bombing uh, the British, you, you name it. All the things that they accused Palestinians of terrorism, they were doing, the Israelis. So, um, uh, you know, I'm talking about the militias, Haganah, Hashomir, which later, became, you know, changed name and grew and, and merged uh, um, over the years. But it ended up being the Israeli occupation forces. They call it defense forces. You should call it IOF, Israeli occupation forces. So, um, you know, they, they murdered his family uh, in cold blood. I don't, I don't understand what they think uh, is, is going to happen. Um, in any case, uh, this is... Th let me just show you a clip. It's not related 100% to what I'm talking about, but uh, uh, I saw this tweet and I, th I thought it kind of, um, uh, again, encapsulates the contempt that the Israelis have towards the Palestinians. So this is from Tim Anderson. He said, it's hard to overstate how hated the colonizing Israelis are in Palestine. Here, an Israeli armored vehicle hits a Palestinian car while trying to escape confrontations with Palestinian youth in the village of Al Mazra near Ramallah. So just, look, just watch this. Look at that, they, they just completely rammed this car. And you see everybody throwing the stones? That, that gives you an idea of, um, of the sentiment that Palestinians have towards the Israeli occupiers, right? I've seen so many clips uh, because the Israelis are raiding the West Bank the whole time during the last weeks. And of course they use the excuse of Tel Aviv. Uh, you know, Naftali Bennett, who's the Israeli prime minister, he, he told uh, the Israeli forces uh, to go on the offensive. Basically, he gave them a blank check. And that's why you have Shireen being killed. But again, this is kind of normal. It's not, you know, it's not like before Naftali Bennett made these remarks, there was no violence from the Israelis. But, but you see how everybody's throwing rocks at the, at the Israeli jeep, um, the armored vehicle, I should say. I've seen so many videos all over the West Bank uh, because that, that's what it is. Like, you're occupying these people. You are on their land. You are uh, armed, you are violent, you are aggressive, you are an invader. Of course they're going to throw rocks at you and do more because you're an invader and you are not native to this land and you have dispossessed Palestinians, uh, vilified them, occupied them, rendered them nationless and stateless uh, and boxed them in to re into refugee camps on their own soil. I mean, this is unbelievable. Unbelievable, you know? I just want to add one more thing about the six from Gilboa. Uh, as I said, they were given five, um, five years and eight months, right, extra. But uh, on top of that, um, they were hit with eight month suspended. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, so suspended sentences and fined. Um, so around 5,000, I think, sh uh, shekels, right? So that's uh, $1,500. So just to be clear, uh, the eight months is suspended, the five years is not. So that's why when I, when I was talking about five years and eight months, th this is what I mean. Um, the court also gave four-year sentences and $600 fines to four prisoners who helped the escapees carry out their plan. Uh, the new sentences were denounced by a spokesman for the Gaza ruling <laughs> Hamas terror group. Yeah, it, it's the Times of Israel, so I apologize for the, uh, the, the drivel. Uh, but Hamas said that it was a continuation of the aggression and violations of the occupation against our heroic prisoners. So, um, again, as I told you, they were captured, and here they, they mentioned that Zubaydi, the most famous of them all, Zakaria down here, uh, he was captured in, nor in, in northern occupied Palestine. Uh, 
two others made their way into Jenin and hid out there until their arrest on September 19th. So, yeah, that, that's really funny because Zubaydi was not um, meant to go on the escape. He kind of just ended up in that cell. Uh, <laughs> like it says here, Zubaydi said he saw the tunnel for the first time on the day of the escape. But can I show you something? Do you see his face? Do you see Zakaria's face? Here in, in, the, in the top left. Compare that with this, with the picture that I showed you here. You can, you can see very clearly after he was arrested that they beat him up and his face is swollen. Right? And uh, they, they're not showing you the other pictures, but I posted them on, on Twitter uh, at the time. You can see very clearly that all of these guys were, were you know, really roughed up and beaten up uh, when the Israelis uh, uh, captured them. Uh, which, again, shows you that uh, there, there is no rule of law. There's only military uh, uh, rule. And that, of course only brings violence. So they are, you know, again, they're, they're saying that Zubaydi was a, a masterminded terror attacks during the Second Intifada. Yeah, th this is the kind of garbage you will get from the West or Israeli newspapers. Anybody who resists colonialism is a terrorist. The French said the same thing about the Algerians. It's a, we know this story. Narfah al-Ussah. Narfah al-Ussah. So in any case, uh, uh, just wanted to update you on the situation. Um, and if there are any more developments about the Gilboa Six, the six guys who escaped from Gilboa, um, I'll, I'll, of course, uh, have them for you right here on the channel.